Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest V. Last time, our castle was stolen by an evil wizard named Mordak. Why he stole our castle? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out, but uh, in the meantime, we are now in Serenia, and we need to find a way to get to Mordak. So of course, we're just gonna wander around aimlessly, because that's the best way to get things done, I guess. <laughs> Let's take a look around. While blocking an alleyway, a frustrated man fixes a broken wheel on his wagon. And yes, I can barely hear that too, and there are no subtitles, so we're just gonna have to bear with it. How goes it with you, good fellow? Not well, I'm afraid. This old wagon's always giving me trouble. Can I help you in any way? Thank you kindly, but I think I can handle it. Alright then, good luck. Thanks. With this wagon, I'm gonna need it. And Graham's a good guy, so he offers to help even though his family may be in imminent peril. Graham notices an old wooden barrel on the street corner. Old wooden barrel? Let's reach inside. If we can. There we go. Inside the barrel, Graham sees an old rotting fish. An old rotting fish? Who would want that? I would. Graham leans way down into the barrel and removes phew, the smelly old fish. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get out of this noise. May I help you, sir? What is, uh... At the back of the shop, Graham notices a dressing room in which a rude, finicky customer tries on many items of fine clothing. <laughs> and, uh, who's this fellow? The tailor. An aristocratic looking man attends solicitously to Graham as he looks at all the wares in the tailor shop. In the corner of the shop, draped casually over a tailor's form, Graham sees a thick fur lined cloak. It's funny because uh, with um, VGA games, if there's something you can grab, it usually has. Uh, I forget what it's called, but there's like a name it. for it. Oh. But it's uh, brighter than the others. It has a different uh, texture than the other items in the background. Something uh, aliasing something? I don't know. I'm interested in buying something here. Ah, let me show you some things. A fine piece of cloth. With this material, I could make you beautiful shirts. There isn't a more beautiful piece of fabric to be found anywhere. With this, I could make you the finest trousers you've ever had. Well, what do you think? Well, right now I'm just looking. Thanks anyway. Sure, sure. Whatever you say, I'm just here to help. Oh my gosh, the way he walks, the way he talks, the earrings. Can you expect me to wear this? Oh jeez, okay. <laughs> that guy's rude. But yeah, you can, uh... Guess some things about that guy, but there's nothing we can do here now. But the, the shop is here. He's checking out Grandma as I walk away. Hmm, that guy left, but Graham notices a shiny silver coin lying forgotten on the street hmm. near the broken wagon. Oh, let's grab it. Bending down, Graham quickly retrieves the silver coin from the street. So we have some money to buy things now. And unfortunately, we can't afford anything in the tailor shop. So let's try this shop over here. Come on in, look around. Let me know if you're interested in anything. The plump old toy maker, who seems a jolly sort, carefully mends a toy while sitting comfortably behind the counter. A pretty little girl, who must be the toy maker's granddaughter, plays with a doll while grandfather looks on. If it's not in by tomorrow, I'll send you to the sawmills. Uh, what's happening here? Okay. Oh, that was weird. Can I keep this doll? I really like her. Now, Katrina, you know these toys are for sale for other kinder. Besides, you've got plenty of dolls. You can play with her, but just be careful. Alright, Grandpapa. I'll take care of her. Okay, the dialogue there was acting really weird. It like, wasn't going to the next line until I clicked. So that's why it was skipping around a lot, because I was clicking a little bit too much. But oh well. 
This is a fine little toy shop you have here. You must be very proud. Danke, son. I've worked very hard at it over the years. But you know, you need to really love it. And I do. Are most of these toys your creations? Yeah, most of them. But not all. Some my son made. Some I bought. Some I traded for. You're very talented. Danke, danke. Well, let me know if I can help you. Hmm. The little girl is more interested in her doll. She pays no attention to Graham. And there's nothing here that we want, so let's just get out. What is in here? Take a look around if you want, but we don't have any shoes to sell you right now. We sold our last finished pair yesterday. Our business ain't doing so good anymore. And we're getting too old to keep trying. Is there anything I can do to help? There ain't nothing you can do, short of buying us out. But like I said, if you want to look around, feel free. Okay, thanks. Look around at your zero merchandise. The shoemaker's wife, looking haggard and worn, tiredly stitches away at a large piece of shoe leather. The old shoemaker, eyes squinted and fingers callous from years of making shoes, drives tiny nails into a shoe sole with a small cobbler's hammer. Like I said, I, I can barely hear this either, and there's no way for me to adjust the music volume separate from the volume in general. You don't have any shoes for sale, huh? That's right. No shoes at all. We're making a pair right now, but it'll take a while. We're not as fast as we used to be. Oh, that's okay. My own boots should carry me through the rest of my journey. Sorry, son. We're doing the best we can. Y'all didn't prepare very well for retirement, did ya? The old shoemaker wearily hammers tiny nails in his shoe sole. He doesn't even seem to notice Graham. Oh well, let's uh, get out of here. Nothing we can do there either! Hmm, is there anything we can do anywhere? Let's see, there should be one more shop, but I actually can't seem to... Here? No! Where's that other shop? There's that door, that door, that door. There should be one more. Um... Is it further this way? I'll, I'll just tell you right now, this is the uh, King's Quest I am least familiar with. Back when I was a kid, we had the game, but I never got to play it because, uh, like, by the time I was old enough to be able to play it, there was a disc missing or something. It just wasn't working, so we always had the box, and I, was si I would always sit there with the box and uh, look at it and want to play it so badly, but never could was able to. But for real, there should be one more shop here, and I'm completely blinking out on where the heck it is. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm an idiot. The shop I'm looking for isn't even in the town. Luckily, we get away from all that noise. I believe this is the place. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Like I said, I'm not very familiar with this one. I've only played through it once. Ooh, I'll wait for you here, Graham. And how is your poor dear mother doing, William? Oh, she hasn't been doing too well lately. But my brother and I help out whenever we can. Thanks for asking, Amanda. Yes, they were just made fresh this morning. Here you go. 
Yes, this will be a fine dessert for our dinner tonight. Let's go home, Austin. Here's the last of the pies. Welcome to our bakehouse, Traveler. Of course, all of our wares are wonderful, but today we've got a special uncustard pie. Just one silver coin each, but take your time. Let me know when you're ready. All right. So usually, you know, in adventure games or other in games in general, when you walk in on a conversation that stops the game so you can listen to it, it usually has some relevance to the plot. That was a completely pointless conversation that had nothing to do with anything that we will ever see again. Just saying. The baker, a large, sturdy fellow, waits for customers behind a pie-covered counter. The Baker Brothers seem to have a pet, a large, mangy cat. Aw, how cute. In the kitchen of the bakehouse, Graham can see another big, burly man doing the day's baking. Alright, well, uh, let's see about these Everything pies. Looks so delicious, it's hard to decide what to buy. <laughs> Everybody has that problem, but what a problem to have. Those custard pies look most delicious. Yes, they're made from a recipe handed down from our dear mama and her mama before her. Hmm, it's still hard to decide, though. Well, take your time, there's no hurry. You know what, I want to buy a pie, and we found some money. Sir, I would like to purchase one of your custard pies. These pies cost one silver coin each. I've got it right here. Here you go. I hope you enjoy your custard pie. Oh, I'm sure I will. Oh, we got the sound for uh, getting points. Is there really no way I can just do something? Uh, oh, uh, we have a custard pie now. Now, this is one of those games where you want to save very often, and I will show you why. So let me uh, save. Yeah, I saved with save. Now, let's take a look at this custard pie. Mmm, the custard pie looks delicious. All right. Let's have a bite. Mmm, that was the best custard pie Graham has ever eaten. And now the game is completely unwinnable. Yeah, because I ate that pie. Now, I... There are several things like this in the game, and for this one, I can understand that because you accomplished nothing, that that there's another use for the pie. You could figure that out, but if you just like keep going with the game, much much later into the game, near uh, when you're getting near the end, nearish the end, there's a part where you need the pie, but you won't have it, and you'll have to go all the way back to before you ate it. So let's restore. And the pie is intact. Can we eat the fish? The smelly old fish is much too disgusting for human consumption. Luckily we cannot. <laughs> so let's keep going this way. Hmm. The Swarthy Hog Inn. Weary travelers can enter through the inn's front door. Alright, let's uh, go on in and check it out. Don't do this if you're playing along. That really? Well, why didn't you warn me before I entered? Hmm. Graham notices three rough-looking men huddled over the bar in serious conversation. Since they're talking in such low tones, Graham can't quite hear what they're saying. A flea-bitten old dog lies asleep in the corner. Well, let's uh, see what they're talking about. You know that job we pulled yesterday? Where's the rest of the loot, huh? I think one of you guys is holding out on me. Gentlemen, please excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Diane is full. Ain't got no more rooms. Hey, boss. This guy looks like a real troublemaker. What do you want me to do with him? Rub him out.
soon put you out of your misery. Yeah, so if you enter in there, it's a game over. Now there is a part in the game where you have to enter there, and these exact same things will happen, but something different happens, and there's no real indication as to when that is. Of course, I'll show you, but for now, that is just something that is like, you just walked into the wrong place, that d it seems like an innocent place enough, but nope. So let's not, uh, let's not go in. Cedric perches upon the Swarthy Hog Inn sign. Back down the road to the east, you will run into the bakehouse. And to the west, you're not going to say, are you? A large haystack dominates the area in front of the barn. Can we take some hay? Carefully, Graham searches through the haystack, but doesn't see anything of importance. Oh well, that's probably not important. Let's uh, carry on. What bear? Oh, this one. A large bear seems to be very interested in the honey inside the old tree. You don't seem very scared of the bear. <laughs> Not being much of a honey eater, Cedric shows little interest in the beehive. Cedric seems to be quietly contemplating their current situation, and so is not inclined to indulge in conversation right now. Well, let me uh, save the game and see what I can do here. The bear is too intent on the honey to listen to Graham. Aw, oh, that's too bad. Hey, bear, stop. Okay, don't stop. Tisk, tisk. Graham should know better than to feed the bear. <laughs> okay, so let's get the bear distracted by something else. Rotten fish. There you go. What what did I just see? What was that? That was not a bee. Well, she promised some honeycomb. <laughs> so let's uh, get some. Graham reaches a hand into the beehive and retrieves a very sticky chunk of honeycomb. Wrapping it in a protective piece of cloth, he then pockets it. Pockets it. Okay, can we get more? Graham has already taken a honeycomb. It wouldn't be wise to antagonize the now friendly bees. But I want some... Graham has okay. All... You can't get killed by the bees, I guess. Oh, and there's a stick here. Graham bends down and picks up the large stick from the ground. Sticks are always helpful to adventurers. And now that the bear's gone, I wish I had stopped that music, but oh well. Some more exploring. A bully of a dog terrorizes the poor ants as he playfully digs at their large anthill. Wow, this is practically the same music as when you were uh, captured by Lolot's goons back in King's Quest IV. A mangy old dog digs playfully at the huge anthill while the poor ants scurry about frantically. Uh, doggy, you shouldn't do that. The dog doesn't seem to be a friendly sort at all. Uh oh, it's not gonna. It won't kill you, but it won't let you near it either. But we just got a stick. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm King Anthony the Great. May I ask who you are? Why, certainly. I'm King Graham of Daventry, and this is my friend, Cedric. We're seeking a way to cross the Great Mountains to the ocean on the other side. That is a very perilous undertaking. I wish you would reconsider. But if you shall not, in return for rescuing our home from that flea bitten cur, I wish to offer you our help. If perchance you may ever need it. Thank you very much, King Antony. Cedric and I appreciate your kind offer. We look forward to meeting you again. Okay. So, uh, what did that accomplish? I guess we'll have to see later. Oh. What? A colony of large ants parade up and down a huge anthill built amid some scrubby bushes. 
actually looks pretty cool. Cedric perches safely on a scrubby bush above the anthill and watches the activity below. Alright, sorry for that skip. Uh, anyway, so uh, to the west of us, there is a desert, and we're going to have to explore it to see if we can't find uh, some way to cross the mountains. But uh, it is lucky that we have Cedric here, because uh, he'll be able to fly around the desert and be able to guide us, because other otherwise we might get lost and die. We wouldn't want that. So, isn't that right, Cedric? Having other things on his mind, Cedric doesn't appear to be in the mood to talk right now. Okay. Well, let's go on west. Ooh, there's nothing but a hot, dry desert to the west. Most people avoid it because there are bandits out there. Ooh, if you insist on going, I'll wait for you here. Uh, you, you mean you're not going to help me? So, I'm just going to have to wander around here alone and you're not going to... Circle above and guide me or anything. Okay, okay that's fine. That's fine. You're, you're good, Cedric. Alright. Let me put down a save here. Alright, so I guess we're wandering into the desert unaided. That's fine. We're good. So let's just wander around a bit. Hmm. There really isn't much around here. Not much at all, like... The scorching sun burns down on the dry desert as Graham struggles through the hot sand. He looks around, but all he can see is more desert. Oh, we'll be fine. We'll just, we just, we'll, we're bound to run into something important. The hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on Graham. He must drink, and soon... Oh, we'll be fine. We'll be perfectly alright. If we just keep heading in one direction, we're bound to run into something, right? Too late. Graham collapses and dies of extreme thirst in the hot desert sun. If only he could have found an oasis. Dying for a drink, Graham? Okay. Okay, so that's one of the things about this game. Uh, you have, I don't know how you're supposed to figure it out, but you're just supposed to wander around the desert and maybe map it out yourself, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I believe I want to be one... Let's see, um, there we go. I want to be one down, and then I want to go left, I believe. Hopefully, if this uh, crappy map I'm looking at is uh, any indication, then I should be able to find something important. Ish. Here we go. So uh, around the desert, there are oases. And these, this is how you uh, recharge your health, through your thirst. Ah, life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. All right. A small oasis. It's tantalizing water, so sparkling in the desert sun. Graham's hot, thirsty body is irresistibly drawn to it. <laughs> hot, thirsty body. And we'll just walk right through it. Not, not like we can contaminate it or anything. Okay, so... If we go north a couple times... Aha, we hit the wall. And we go left a couple times. Or three times. Rocky cliffs rise high above Graham's head. Hmm. Ooh, what is this? I'm gonna save here. <laughs> Tantalizingly to Graham. Can we open it? Open Sesame! The temple door won't open. Perhaps there's something missing. I don't think there's anyone home, Graham. Uh, I think something's supposed to happen. Oh, 
We well, can get some water from here. Ah, life-giving water. All right, and let's go back up. Is something supposed to happen? From across the desert sands, Graham can hear the sound of approaching hoofbeats. Okay, so I actually had to wait down here and not up here. So, uh... A spy! What the? Graham. Never trust a bad guy, Graham. Well, I didn't know. So yeah, what you're supposed to do is hide behind this rock. And then wait. From across the desert sands, Graham can hear the sound of approaching hoofbeats. There we go. And with us hidden, we go in and we can spy on these guys. Open sesame! Hmm, so he was able to get in when he knocked with that staff he has. So there's something in there. Alright, let's make note of that. Let's get another drink here. Life okay, I need to get my map back. Okay, anyway. Let's see, so uh, to get to where we want to go, to head left twice, and straight down. I believe. And there's water here. Ah. And we already know what the narrator is going to say, so let's keep going. To the left, and down a few more. And I believe on this next screen you're at the bandit camp but can we get the staff and open up the temple well you're just gonna have to find out next time let's play king's quest 5 thank you for watching and have a good day